of the co-founders and the CTO at Loom. Uh, I oversee the scaling of the team, uh, the infrastructural unit economics, the execution, and uh, the, the also the uh, architectural cohesion of the entire product. And Loom, Loom is a uh, Loom is a video messenger for the workplace. It allows you to record your screen, your front-facing camera, and a little cam bubble, and narrate a video all at once. And as soon as you're done recording, you have an instantly shareable URL that has a recorded video that you can send anybody. What is a good use case for that? There are many. Um, employee training is a great use case, trying to create a library of content for other employees to know how to use different systems when they come into a workplace. Uh, but there's also use cases for external facing orgs like sales and marketing. There's internal use cases uh, for product engineering and design. So design reviews, uh, engineering architectural reviews, if you want to get a lot of dense information across to other people on your team. And a video tends to be the best format for your specific use case. Uh, you can use Loom. So one of the great things about Loom is that it's a horizontal use case product. One of the hard things about Loom is that it's a horizontal use case product. So it can be used for many different things. And it really depends on uh, what the communication practices and ceremonies are for your team. The, so like for, for, for people like to stuff how I have used it in the past, and that's like multiple things, and I will just tell us stuff how I've used it this week, okay? So uh, I work with a designer, and the designer is sending me the first wireframes and has like, is this actually what you have in mind, all this kind of stuff? So what she can do is she can like go for the, uh, the wireframes, uh, tell me what she has in mind, explain me, ask me questions about stuff that's a little bit unclear, and send me this whole thing as a package. It doesn't even need to send me the actual wireframes because the video is big enough. I can see the wireframes for like an early feedback, you know? And what I do is I um, uh, can either decide to write back as an email, that's fine, you know? Or if initial impressions are important, I can just also record a loom and send that back, you know? So what I use this for in the past a lot is explaining product nuances, I think is like a good way to frame this, especially about stuff where you are not certain yourself. You know, this is where I found the best, for me personally, the best value, like where it's, you kind of like, maybe we should do, maybe should that, I don't really know. And that's hard to formulate as text without being very like long and verbose, you know? But in a video, it's super natural and it's 20 seconds maximum, you know? And you have like a total, maybe now like a three minutes, two minutes video, which gets across what you're trying to do in a much more human, detailed way than any text could ever do. And uh, that's where, like, just one use case I had this week. Another use case I had this week was, I receive a startup, which I think is interesting. I sent this to a friend of mine and asked him to just quickly record a loom where he goes through what I sent to him, goes through the pitch deck, tells me his thoughts, go through the uh, landing page and tell me his thoughts, like, as they happen real in real time, you know? Um, so, there's multiple use cases for this. And this brings me like to the first problem or the first question is that it's like, the, it's a horizontal product, similar to Calendly. I can use it for anything, you know? Um, do you think that you will, ex like, how do you think about extending the product here? Like, what do you think will be like future additions to this product? Yeah, so we are going to be coming out with uh, a, a shared team library and mm -hmm. also enterprise plans. And actually when I say like a shared team library, it makes it sound like it's separate from the platform a as a whole. We are completely changing the Loom platform to be centered around workspaces mm -hmm. from the free plans all the way to the paid team and enterprise tiers, um, which will allow us to scale with different companies that we've been seeing scale on Loom. At this point, we have over 82,000 companies around the world, ranging from 10 employees to like some of our biggest companies have 300,000 employees. Um, so at this point we've had to really put a lot of thought and effort into the team collaboration space mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Loom because the, the number of use cases are just so wide. Other things mm -hmm. that we're coming out with, we're coming out with an iOS app, we're building an Android app right now. Um, we are extending the performance and functionality of our PC desktop app, which a lot of people have been complaining about, rightfully so, it's been, it's been neglected. Uh, we're working on integrations uh, within other platforms. We recently announced a native uh, Jira integration. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're working on a lot of stuff uh, within the Teams plan. There's also engagement insights, so being able to get info on where people drop off in a video and hooked alerts into the systems that you already work within. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a, there, there is a lot going on. Uh, so 
uh, which is which is another thing we could dive into in, in another time. There there are um, there's rhyme to the reason as to mm-hmm. why we're focusing on all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean yeah. the main the main thing I find is that like the main thing that I've been like really focusing on lately, especially with being in these uh, sales calls, sales meetings. Mm-hmm. I've I've probably met with um, over eighty. 80 or so in, in the last like month and a half, I've met with 80 or so different companies talking to them about how they currently communicate and what mm-hmm. they need to do to shift, you know, their communication practices to being async, to being remote first, based on how their team is set up. What is um, your, what is your bigger, like, assume after like the first five, you repeat your feedback, you know? So yeah. what is your, what is your 20 seconds, 30 seconds recommendation like you usually give to people? I think um, synchronous time is really good if you need to get emotional context into how people mm-hmm. feel about data. But other than that, you can front load a ton of the conversation to be async and then mm-hmm. use the synchronous time to dive deeper into things. So for instance, uh, we, we've helped a company change and we do it ourselves, but we've helped our, a company change. It's weekly all hands across like 150 different people mm-hmm. um, to front load all of the content with looms. Mm-hmm. And with, with Notion documents. Mm-hmm. And everybody consumes that content ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And then they spend 30 minutes going over um, Q&A. And mm-hmm. that's, all, that's all that happens. And so uh, the, the company is able to, and, and every company we've seen transform into like an async first. I'm sorry about that. Synchronous communication uh, is a problem, I agree. I, uh, I, I, so async, async first to get context before meetings and then figuring out whether or not you have to have a meeting is one of the biggest hurdles that I see co-located teams having to uh, work around. A lot of them want to push yeah. for a lot of meetings and it's just mm-hmm. not efficient. Um, I, I think the thing I'm really interested, I'm going to be really interested in, I think we've gone through this uh, transition phase in the last six weeks where we've essentially compressed like maybe five years of organizational innovation. <laughs> uh, for co-located teams. And it's going to be really interesting to see how they uh, change their communication practices yes. even when they go back to the office because yes. I think a lot of people have been working in a distributed way, even if it's not remote, in a distributed way for a long time and they didn't even realize it. And now they're yeah. going to start realizing, oh, wait, the way that I communicate with my coworker who's like in a different building at Google mm-hmm. should be the same way that I communicate with them if I was in like two time zones ahead. And like it really should. It's more efficient. And even if not, like most of the best practices in remote work are just actual good processes. You know, write stuff ahead, like write stuff up ahead. Let people read this on their own time. Let people feedback specifically on a document and not just randomly in a video call. You know, keep meeting short. Like a lot of that stuff is just establishing better processes that make even sense if you're in the same office, right? The one thing that's interesting is to me, like uh, Khan Academy had like this one big insight that education is better when people consume the content on their own time and then afterwards use the in-person only for contextualization and questions and uh, all this kind of stuff, you know, and like nuances, let's say. And it's interesting that you are essentially trying to do that same learning, but for companies. So you, you front load all the content and then afterwards you have let's say context and Q and A and nuance in, 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 in person meetings, right? Do you, do you believe that you will stay with Loom focused only on video or do you see yourself on the long run that you could become like a full, I don't know, documentation, uh, decision-making suit? It's a good question. Um, I don't think we would become a full documentation suit. Mm-hmm. I actually think one of the, uh, one of the superpowers for Loom is that it's both a new workplace behavior, like in general using video at a rapid and daily mm-hmm is a new workplace behavior and video is really hard. Mm-hmm. And there are similar companies that follow these trends of usage, like Stripe is one that's actually very different from Loom, mm-hmm. where uh, automating payments at the time that they did it, I mean, if you had ever used the PayPal APIs, they were yes. absolutely horrendous. And they were the best out there. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, new, new behavior in the way that developers interact with payments, no more PCI compliance across the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and pretty, pretty hard, steep, steep, uh, steep, you know, barrier to entry to get into it by compliance. Mm -hmm. I think that Stripe has like a deeper tranche there. For Mm -hmm. us, I think video will get commoditized and become Mm -hmm. easier as tools like Loom and Zoom and, you know, Mm -hmm. even remote.co over here, like they get, they they become more widespread. Mm -hmm. I think that the standards will get easier to work with. Yes. Um, But I I would like Loom to be accessible and viewed as uh, the visual communication backbone. 
especially as we have now like a generations and generations coming up that are more, I would say, video literate than uh, old people like me, you know? Uh, and for them, it's like, na like I would say native to them is like doing quick videos, do doing quick editing and so on and so on, you know, and communicating through visual expression, you know, by far more than it is like for the generation before. Like for me, I would say still chat, like how I grew up with, you know? Uh, so I, 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 I understand your POV on saying like, what if you just focus on doing that right for an enterprise custom a context or like a business context? Uh, one I would, would quickly like to switch gears. So in the last month, I assume you had uh, a few more new customers, okay? And you're the CTO. Uh, I have also like kind of like a CTO background, so I feel your pain. Yeah. Let's, let's make this a therapy session. So uh, <laughs> how much more inbound did you have the last more months? Like what happened? Like how did you need to adapt to that? Like how did your situation change? Yeah. Um, I mean, like I... I can't disclose exact figures, but if you go to like similar web, you can lo look at Loom's traffic. It's it's pretty insane. Um, the last like six weeks or so of growth has made the entire rest of our history look flat. And <laughs> the rest of our growth was big enough that we were able to like raise one to the next day and kind of open. So it's like we, we went through a lot of scale in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, the things that I found, like obviously scaling a video infrastructure is really, really hard. I think the, the technical problems weren't the hardest part. The thing that I realized that was really hard is getting, you know, 20 people across seven different time zones who are burning the midnight oil for multiple weeks at a time to first like take breaks, understand when they need to take breaks and help reach out for help. Mm -hmm. um, but secondly, to do what they're supposed to be doing, because a lot of people in that situation uh, want to help out, they want to jump in, and they actually add a lot of chaos to the process. Mm -hmm. So the really hard part of that really compressed period of scale was actually coordination and, mm -hmm. and setting setting proper frameworks and guidance for, uh, you know, a team that is distributed. I think that coordination lag, uh, you absorb that when you have a remote team. But the great mm -hmm. thing is that you can have people working while the other people are sleeping at the same time. Mm -hmm. so, um, Where's your team distributed right now? Like how many people in there? So Loom is 70 people overall, just about mm -hmm. 70 people. The engineering team is just about 25. Mm -hmm. We started uh, we started the year with um, 14 in engineering. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Ashwin is already like politely kicking us out. Like one last question, because there's many people right now thinking about starting on something on their own. Sure. Uh, what kind of product would you like to like, see exist right now? Like what kind of product should people build? It's a good question. Um, I mean, I just had this conversation with you, Andreas, mm -hmm. and I know that uh, there is re remote.com, which is something that I'm looking into. But in general, uh, standardizing compliance, HR, and and as well, like the IT provisioning of a remote team. Like there's a couple that remote.com seems to do, um, you know, the, the, the payout compliance mm -hmm. and HR side of, of that problem. But on the flip side, there's there's companies like First Space, mm -hmm. which do the uh, provisioning, give employees like constant coffee, which I personally think is like really important, um, and and like also supply desk equipment, uh, hardware, that kind of stuff, and help with upgrades and the security of it. Mm -hmm. I would love to see all of this kind of come together into one platform. I, I feel like it makes sense to have that all in one platform, an HR platform for a remote world, a remote and distributed world. I would love to see that happen. Um, mm -hmm. And if that existed right now, we would we would pay for that, and we we pay a decent amount of money for it. Mm -hmm. Cool, that's a that's a good pitch. Uh, cool, thanks so much for your time. Um, and Ashwin, I hand over to you.